Koji is still fighting on instinct, bearing his fangs at the strongest person around. Megami may be exhausted, but he's by far the least injured, so Toji drags him outside of the station in an instant. Before Megami can even process what's happening, he finds himself outside on the road. Megami lands safely, but he looks back across the street at his opponent with a surprised expression. He claims that this ridiculous level of speed even passes the Kunas from back when they fought earlier in the series. Honestly, love how Megami doesn't even realize that this guy's actually his dad. I really, really can't wait for the day in the series where he finally finds out who Toji Fushiguro is, or like who Toji Zenin is, because that's who he knows him as, I'm pretty sure. Meanwhile, back with father and son, Megami tries to visualize winning, but Toji is far too much of a monster to even fathom defeating. Megumi activates his rabbit escape when both fighters notice Sukuna's presence suddenly appearing in Shibuya. Megumi uses the torrent of rabbits as a distraction to create distance from his adversary. He also summons Toad and asks himself why he just felt Sukuna. Toji instinctively charges into the swarm of rabbits and nearly stabs Megumi with a sharp and playful cloud, but Megumi dives onto the ground and avoids it. Running low on cursed energy, Megumi's sole advantage is that Shoko is stationed somewhere in Shibuya. Flashing over there, Yaga says Ajichi and Eno would both have perished if not for her, but Joko says that that's only thanks to the principal's quick thinking. They set up the station before Nanami even contacted them, freeing him to help up with the mission. Honestly, I think uh, I think Yaga might actually be the mole who was feeding stuff to the higher-ups and it wasn't even Kikichi in the first place. Back in the battle, Toji chases after Megami and nearly stabs him from behind. Luckily, Toad's tongue pulled Megami away down an alleyway to avoid the attack. Megami understands that Toji made short work of a special grade and his Shikigami are no match for him. He needs to focus on sacrificing his body rather than his Shikigami and decides it's best to limit any injuries to something Shoko can quickly handle. As Toji stands at the end of the alleyway, Megami surmises that he has to predict his opponent's timing because of his speed and understands that any flaws in timing will surely result in death. Toji suddenly blitzes Megami and nearly stabs him again, but his foot submerged inside Megami's shadows. Megami summons a sword from his shadows and attempts to stab Toji with it. However, Toji disappears in an instant, avoiding it with insane speed. Megami believes that he's out of options when Toji suddenly recalls a memory of his past. It was the time when Toji agreed to meet with Neobito in order to sell his son to the Zenin family. Toji believed that Megami would have potential and he could possibly make something of himself in the future. Toji never fit in, but he thought that it would be the best way to take care of him in the long run. After not speaking a word since Megami met him, Toji suddenly asks Megami what his name is, to which the goat answers perfectly, saying, Fushiguro. Proud that his son chose Fushiguro over Zenin, Toji stabs himself in the head, killing his vessel in order to save his son from his mindless rampage. His body collapses, shocking Megami with the outcome of it all. And honestly, this is why Toji is a goat. Like, yeah, he's strong and his battles are probably the most hype at this point, but the dude literally killed himself for his son. As soon as he knew it was him, he instantly did it. Like, pure Chad dad. As soon as he knew that his son chose Fushiguro over Zenin, he was like, yeah, man, I'm out of here. 